Good evening and welcome to the regular town board meeting for the town of Tustin for January 11th, 2022. Call the meeting to order and join me in the pledge to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, the Sullivan County Mobile DMV is back. It will start January 25th from 10 a.m. till 3.30 p.m. and it will be appointment only. Appointments can be made on the Sullivan County DMV site or by calling the DMV in Monticello. <clears throat> Regarding COVID-19 tests, we had received some COVID-19 tests from the county. Uh, we were allocated 40 of them. They have since been gone. We have no further tests. However, we are supposed to have some coming back. Uh, you can call the legislature to find out when. I would not call the town clerk's office, but I would keep an eye on the town website and the clerk will allow the information to be put back up when we do receive the test kits. A reminder that the Zoom is not for workshops, public hearings only until April of 2022. They are for the regularly scheduled planning, zoning board of appeals, zoning update committee, and the town board. Uh, 1.4, we have a presentation by our Tustin representative for the Upper Delaware Scenic Byway, Josh Felderstein. The floor is yours. Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? I think we have a little. <laughs> Uh, Josh Felderstein, obviously. You I'm, can use the end of the table if you need it, Josh. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thanks. Uh, I represent the town of Tustin for the Upper, Upper Delaware Scenic Byway Committee. Um, so what I'd like to do today is just kind of touch on what the committee is. I know there's some new people here and, you know, the, the meetings vary with who is aware of what the meeting, the committee does and uh, how long we've been around and how it impacts you. And you're welcome to come to our meetings. They're also available to the public. Um, as you may know, um, the scenic byway, you know, there's the United States has scenic byways across the entire country from here to California. They're kind of a big thing in the US. Uh, so they've actually come out with a committee called the National Scenic Byway Foundation. So they're a big you know, these kind of organizations represent everybody who's along the byways so they can all group together, you know, get funds, get grants and make improvements and bring tourism to their local areas. So uh, they're really big in the United States and, and uh, the, you know, the foundations are really large. Um, our committee itself, the Upper Delaware Scenic Byway Committee, it was legislatively designated uh, as a state byway in 2002. And uh, it was around an enhanced concept plan for Route 97 that included Orange and Sullivan and also Delaware counties. Okay, so we've got a lot of, we have a lot of towns in here that are representing everybody. Um, we do have a vision statement, it's a little lengthy, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it down a little bit, but basically it discusses how the byway will highlight what is already an exceptional feature of the region's appeal uh, to residents all alike, and that is the actual highway itself. You know, basically Route 97, um, you know, and we're focusing around its spectacular vistas, uh, its access to obviously the Delaware River, and also its uniqueness uh, for its community along the byway itself, okay? So there's a lot of history, and there's a lot of things that we wanna feature. And so how do we get the tourism and how do we get the people up here? And, uh, and we don't wanna silo ourselves per community, we wanna actually act as a, you know, to get more done, okay? Um, the, uh, the idea here is the economic climate will be enhanced through careful promotion of the byway itself and its resources, and the visitor's um, experience will be heightened through convenient and attractive facilities, turnoffs, roads, overlooks, vistas, okay, we want to make sure there's restrooms and picnic areas and everything that somebody coming from, you know, mostly the city in a lot of instances coming up here might want to enjoy. 
Um, you know, the idea behind what we're thinking is visitors, visitors will have an exceptional year-round experience based on abundant lodging, dining, and recreational choices available uh, to, in the hospitality of the area residents. So that's, a, that's like the, the vision statement that we have in a nutshell. I kind of, it was a little bit lengthier, but I kind of wanted to cut it down a little bit. Uh, in the, when we were uh, opening, there was a traveling ribbon cutting dedication ceremony, and it took place uh, along the 11 communities between Port Jervis and Hancock. Okay, so that, that's who's mostly represented here. Um, the byway was, it, it did achieve incorporation of a 501c3 organization in 2003, and a volunteer committee of representatives was appointed by the municipalities and bylaws were adopted. And that's, you know, I'm representing now, but we have had other representatives of many, many years. Um, this is kind of impressive. To date, the Upper Delaware Scenic Byway Committee has secured over $9,000 in county, state, and federal grant funds. I'm going to touch on the, the grants a little bit later because it's something that I think we should all be aware of. And the, the money's out. I think that, that's the important thing here. So I'm going to rattle off. Uh, a few of our accomplishments, just to give you an idea that we're getting stuff done, and um, and uh, as and it's collectively, so it's a lot of communities coming together. I think it's kind of impressive, you know, for byways. Um, we did sponsor a free one-day business conference called "97 Reasons to Meet on the Byway" in Calhoun. Okay, uh, uh, the St. Lawrence Seaway Trail Executive Teresa Mitchell offered tips on tourism, marketing, and opportunities and she was a keynote speaker, okay? We did design and create route markers uh, along the highway featuring the UDSBC logo, and we collaborated the New York State uh, Department of Transportation on that. So we do have access to uh, the DOT. Um, we began distributing 100,000 copies of a 20-page full-color Meet Us on the Byway brochure, okay? Um, we created an interactive website. This is great. I think everybody at some point should log into the website, upperdelawarecenicbyway.org. Okay. Um, if you just Google Upper Delaware Scenic Byway, it'll, the, the site will come up itself. That was launched in 2007, and then it was upgraded at a later date, and it has a mobile uh, responsive platform for mapping capabilities. So it's nice because there's people down, you know, in the city or anywhere want to come up, they can kind of map out and route a, a, a plan, again, encompassing all the different towns and, you know, not just one single town itself. Uh, we also have a hotline, 866-511-UDSB, okay, and that is basic to accept and fulfill byway information and brochure requests. Um, a $15,000 federal grant project was created uh, to copyright a map for the UDSBC and produce $125,000 promotional placemats, okay. Um, we also had a phase one of a $50,000 Route 97 landscape enhancement project, okay, and that was clearing of five sites along the byway to open up some of the vistas. So when I get to talk about grants later on, just keep in mind that if, if you know of an area, whether it's public or private, and the person private wants to be involved or whatever the case is, and you feel it may be a vista, these are the type of grants, you know, maybe something's growing there and we need to cut down some trees or something. Those, those types of grants are available, okay? The Federal Highway Admission uh, Administration approved uh, about $16,000 federal grant application for the UDSBC for the Invasive Plant Species Educational Campaign and um, Interpretive Signage Project. So there was eight four by two, but custom outdoor interpretive panels, they were designed and installed on each byway community and a brochure was created and public seminars held on spread the word, not the weed. And the bat, that was the battle for the, the not weed. I think everybody may have seen that. It was, there was in a few different communities, but obviously there's a not weed problem. Uh, they have run ads, you know, paid for and run ads in uh, AAA, um, Car and Travel Magazine, um, I love New York radio broadcasts. Uh, there's also been some stuff on 1010 10 wins. Okay. Um, the UDS, we won um, a, the 2013 <laughs> Sullivan County and Cultural Assistance matching grant uh, to produce logo stickers and magnets that were passed out along the community, uh, utilizing a $5,000 grant for the town of Lumberland. 
Um, we retained Fairweather Consulting and New Pulse uh, to produce an estimate of tourism visitation to the Upper Delaware Scenic Byway, which provides an impact analysis identifying potential economic opportunities. This is interesting. The study was completed in 2014 and it found that an average of 283,000 leisure visitors come up for the Upper Delaware Scenic Byway recreational activities, generating 17 million. I can only imagine if that's 2014 where we are now, you know, everybody's coming up at this point. Um, we, uh, the Upper Delaware uh, panel participated in the National Trust for Historic Preservation uh, called This Place Matters. It was a campaign in 2015, encouraging people to share stories and photo spotlighting their favorite sites on Route 97. Um, the town of Highland received a $4,500 grant uh, working with the scenic byway for the Monarch Butterfly, fostering the flyway by the byway. It was a 16 panel piece to educate and inspire people uh, to revitalize and pollinator species. I think everybody may re remember that as well, the Monarch Butterfly, you know, mostly coming out of like Bar Berryville. Um, the, we, we also co-sponsored the Berryville Butterfly Bike Ride, okay? Also a big deal. Um, the Sullivan County uh, Legislature awarded $20,000 and then another 25 for discretionary contracts uh, funding program to invest in scenic vistas. And that's where I'm talking about those grants. If you know of a possible scenic vista or something that you feel is viewing the, the river, let us know and we can see, you know, work with you on getting that grant. Um, they also collected, uh, allocated 5,000 offering promoting butterfly habitat program. They did biodegradable litter bags with the Upper Delaware logo on it. Um, a non-matching grant program to facilitate, facilitate enhancing scenic vistas, uh, offering financial assistance to public and private owners. And that, that's what I was just talking about now. And then we do provide um, advocacy for maintenance and updates for the bridges, okay, uh, and the highways. So, you know, for an example, repairs or frequent damages or vandalism to the hawk's nest, we've been, in many of our meetings, we'll discuss what's going on, and we'll contact the DOT and we'll see how things can better be better in that situation. A lot of tickets have been given out or there was vandalism around that area. Um, the committee worked with its representative from the DOT uh, for new plan si signages along the highway uh, to show, to identify attractions and historic sites, okay? Um, they offered, in 2018, they offered a presentation called the Value Preserving Scenic views, um, and that was at the Narrowsburg Union. And then um, the other thing that kind of stood out is they had a fourth competitive a grant program, Culture and History Along the Byway, and that was introduced in September 2021 to celebrate the rich historical cultural significance of the byway. Mm -hmm. Again, big deal. You know, people forget about the history, and, you know, this is something that everybody can learn about, and a lot of people want to come up and visit. Um, Can you say that again? I didn't hear that. Last sure, time. sure. There was a fourth competitive grant program where the culture and history called the culture and history along the byway, and it was introduced in September of 2021 of this year, and uh, that was to celebrate the rich historical, you know, cultural significance of the byway. I didn't see that. Yeah. Um, some of the things we're currently working on now. This is, um, you know basically anti-litter signs placed along the byway. They're also gonna be doing some a pilot program around some solar powered trash compactors, okay? The big deal here is the, the, the compactor units were enhanced with Wi-Fi, potentially. We're working on that right now, but that's kind of a big deal because it's a hot spot. So, you know, it's, it's a big deal for maybe emergency situations. There's not, you know, like if you're along the river and you're, and, and one of these compactors is nearby and there's a situation, you'll be able to access it and get some Wi-Fi and potentially phone call, okay? Or it just may be visitors themselves. They may go on the website and be aware that the, um, the compactors have Wi-Fi and they realize they need a hotspot upon driving down the highway and something they don't have access if it's in an area where there is bad cell service, okay? Um, here's the other big one. This is all in its uh, early stages. 
but uh, New York Senator uh, John Bonasek secured a $250,000 member line item in 2007 budget for capital construction, potentially of an Upper Delaware Scenic Byway Visitor Center, okay? Uh, they allocated a $25,000 state grant to a feasibility study and design concept to potentially locate the facility at Fort Delaware, um, uh, or also they were exploring the Calicoon Depot. So everything's in its beginning stages on that. Um, nothing that's been you know, uh, allocated at this point, but discussions are around. It would be a great opportunity. Uh, it, you know, that's some great money to come from the state. Um, one thing they would do in regard with that is they did submit county and state funding proposal to establish an executive director position. So that would be somebody, you know, what, what happens a lot of times with these positions, you're probably aware is that, you know, people can't dedicate a lot of time and, you know, every month is when they restart thinking about it again because they got another meeting coming up. And it's like a, a crunch to see what I did. So the idea of getting somebody that would be um, directly in that position would have the uh, opportunity to actually move things forward a lot quicker and have somebody dedicated and have some, you know, uh, you know, uh, play in the game, you know, they're, they're more invested in the product itself. Okay. A um, couple of quick recognitions that we have gotten over the last few years. Um, we were publicly voted uh, the River Reporters Reader's Choice Survey in 2004. Um, in 2008, the Department of Transportation, New York City, selected the Upper Delaware Scenic Byway as the host site for a model by byway signage initiative to demonstrate design standards, including the New York State Byway Signage Manual. Okay. In 2015, USA Today, travel experts selected the Upper Delaware Scenic Byway among 20 finalists in New York State highways. Um, the Upper Delaware Scenic Byway is featured prominently in National Geographic Scenic Wild Delaware River Map Guide. And uh, it was launched in May of 2016. Car and Travel, uh, AAA Magazine named the Upper Delaware Scenic Byway among the New York's best scenic drives in 2014, I think that was. And um, our organization itself, we meet uh, once a month and it's, it's the fourth Monday okay, at 7 p.m., and um, uh, it, it, they usually change the site on where we meet, because it might be, like, might be Calicoon, or, you know, but, you know, we'll, we'll be able to fill you in on that, and um, there is an Upper Delaware Council office across the street on Bridge Street, and all meetings are open to the public, okay, and then also, um, you know, I, I suggest you might want to go onto the, uh, the website, you know, check it out and see what it has to offer. And uh, if you have a business, you may be able to even get some information on there. Um, now I'm just going to touch real quick on the grants that are out there right now. And, and if you, you know, there's a lot of money out there. So if there's other things that you have grants for, then, you know, by all means, um, they're fostering, there's one grant fostering the flyway on the byway. The Delaware River serves as a flyway for annual migration to the Northeastern Monarch. Okay, um, the Upper Delaware Scenic Challenges Organization to help us mission by promoting the habitat through programs, events, and education. Okay, and you can apply for up to $1,500 with awards for single projects. And then um, generally they seem to be around $500, but you can apply for up to $1,500 for that. We also have what I touched on a little earlier, which was the Vista Enhancement Grants. And uh, owners of pri private and public properties along the designated Route 97 Scenic Byway would benefit from selective vegetative clearing to restore improved travelers' view of the Upper Delaware uh, River. And, um, you know, basically that is any work plan with the New York State Department of Transportation and Department of Environmental Conservation rights away must be approved by that agency. But we, we have access to all that, so we can make that happen as well. So if you see a VISTA enhancement that you think is worth your time, you know, let us know. Um, also culture and history along the byway. Another grant will be awarded for projects and events that promote the rich and cultural history associated with New York State Route 97. Funding initiatives must have a focus that support the state designated byway mission and uh, uh, activities will be open to everyone. Um, the, the entries can apply for up to the 1500 for that as well. And then there's just signage along the byway if you felt that there were, you know, some of them are like simple. It's like, some of them say it's the byway. Some of them say there's something historic. 
Um, someone say, don't litter. <laughs> Whatever you think might be relevant to the area. Um, so businesses and nonprofit organizations that are considered new or refurbished signage along the upper Delaware Scenic Byway may seek up to 500 in matching funds for the signs located uh, around Route 97. So if any of these grants are of interest to you, uh, I suggest you go onto the website. You can also um, call the, uh, the numbers on the website, the 866-51-UDSB. And primarily these are projects located off of 97 uh, within one of the, the towns, you know, that we talked about uh, between uh, Port Jervis and, and Hancock. And, um, you know, the grants are awarded in a rolling deadline. So applications uh, must be submitted by the third Monday of the month and will be reviewed uh, on the fourth Monday. Okay. So I, 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 sorry I rattled and there's a lot of information, but I, I'm sorry. I have a, a quick question. In the past, the Scenic Byway um, had some lectures, lecturers open to the public. Uh, Ed McMahon was a great one. That I, went to, and I wondered if there's any plans for anything else coming up. Nothing off the top of my head from any of the meetings we've had recently, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll ask about it. Yeah, because that was really very worthwhile for all uh, elected officials. It was a great lecture. Yeah, no, I saw that on the list. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Josh. <clears throat> 1.5 for the payment of bills. General fund dispersed $71,640.75. Highway dispersed $28,831.13. Water $11,038.22. Sewer $18,347.46 for a total of $129,857.56. Uh, the large general increase that was the insurance was paid, which was forty nine thousand dollars. Greg and Jane did the bills. Any questions? No, nope, nope. all look good. I move that we uh, pay the bills as submitted. I have a motion to pay the bills. A second. I'll second it. All in favor? Uh, aye. Opposed. <clears throat> Division reports. Highway used six hundred and sixty gallons of diesel fuel. Five hundred and ninety eight was for highway. 61 was for non-highway use. They used 168 gallons of gas. And that was for non-highway use. They patched holes on dirt and paved roads. They removed trees in the roadway on Swamp Pond, Perry Pond, Gables, Cashecton Turnpike, and Dewide Roads. They made sand and salt mixture for the winter. They repaired the washout Swamp Pond, Hankins Brook, and Malls Pond. Put all summer equipment away for the winter. To get the remaining trucks ready for the winter. They're out for slippery road conditions several times. The water and sewer monthly report for December completed the monthly drinking water and wastewater sampling and reporting. They took chlorine samples from several different locations in the district, made adjustments to the chlorinator at the sewer plan as needed to maintain federal and state standards on effluent wastewater. They did water meter readings every Wednesday in the month of December, attended a class provided by the New York Rural Water Association for sewer apprenticeship. Overline pumped out sludge from dosing tanks. They replaced the fabric around sand bed number three. They found several large water leaks and service lines, assisted contractors where possible to get the leaks fixed. We started using a new GPS unit to mark water lines at well number three, valves and distribution boxes at the sewer plant, several manholes at well one and several sewer cleanouts, including two that were in the wooded easement between 97 and Kirk Road. They dug up two septic tanks, installed two new risers on one, and four septic tanks pumped, they inspected pump and grinder stations, found one pump station not working, determined the pump was bad and tripped the electrical panel. Overline helped replace a broken sewer pump, plumbing and a bad float at house on Bridge Street and let one homeowner know about a high water use. They responded to one New York dig safe markout request. For the building department and code enforcement, the 2021 annual report, they did construction inspections of 216. They had two fire and safety inspections. They had four uh, plate inspections. They had nine certificate of occupancies. 
and 89 certificate of compliances. They issued 144 permits. They issued 143 in 19, 132 in 2020. They had two additions, seven accessory building and garage. They had 17 alterations, renovations. They had seven camping, four chimney and solid fuel, four commercial new uh, accessory buildings, four commercial alterations, renovations, two commercial decks, eight decks, five demolitions, 10 driveway permits, 16 electrical geothermal units, five logging permits, seven mechanical fuel tank abatements, 19 new homes. This was up uh, in 2019, there was nine, and 2020, there was eight. So more homes this year than the previous two. Six pool permits, one renewal, 14 roofs, residential, commercial, six septic tank permits, one sidewalk, one solar permit, three wells. They performed 141 municipal searches. They did 81 searches in 2019. They did 101 in 2020. They did two floodplain permits. They had three complaint violation notices. Monies collected by the office between January 1 of 2021 and December 31st of 2021 was $50,610.44. The amount for 2020 was $33,904.90. And 2019 was $47,348.30. See, tell me what a visible search is. Those are searches that, uh, Ken, you can correct me if I am wrong, they're done in order to promote the sale of a house. Yeah, usually what happens is when people order title insurance, they do what's called a departmental search and they get a, a letter from the, our building department, which notifies them that there are either are or aren't any open violations with the property and that the property either has a <coughs> occupancy or predates the requirements for that. Okay. Might also indicate whether the property is on a public highway. But it's just that sort of thing. We get a fee for that. <laughs> the assessor's report for December, the address bank code and new deeds were processed for the second submission before the printing of the January tax bills. Deeds have been slow recently. Some force exemption commitments have been being received. By executive order, the governor has given the option to not do personal renewals of the age exemptions for 2022 and carry forth with those already on. Since I no longer review the income for the enhanced star exemption, I have not seen those taxpayers who may have become eligible for the age exemption due to change in their income. Therefore, the number of aged exemptions is now about half of what it was three years ago. Currently, only 21 households are in the program. I forwarded this information to Ben for the town board resolution due to the fact that many seniors apply in person. I am asking that we exercise this option for the protection of both the seniors and our office staff. I attended the Sullivan County Assessors Association meeting at Mohegan Lake during December. Tax challenges seem to be at an all time slow pace with some towns still having not received some case notices. We had no personal challenges and have not been affected. from the Upper Delaware Council. I can't unmute. Hello. You're unmuted, Sue. Oh, okay, great. Okay, um, just to let you know, guys, my agenda, what I'm looking at here, stopped at water and sewer. So I don't know what that's about, but I'm, I was happy to have an agenda to follow. Um, so Upper Delaware Council, we elected new officers for 2022. Um, Andy Boyer will be the chair and Aaron Robinson from Shahola will be the vice chair and Al uh, Henry is always the secretary. Um, there was a presentation by the DRBC on microplastics in the Delaware River Basin and um, they're more prevalent in the lower basin but they exist here as well. So, um, so anyway, um, Andy Boyer gave a brief recap of 2021 and then we started looking into 2022, which brings us to the second annual litter sweep. And this was a really successful effort last year. It coordinates with the traditional litter pluck that we Sullivan County has been sponsoring. And so anything that we, is collected is accepted for free in Sullivan County. And, um, 
there we don't have any grant funding however this year so we're looking at partners such as the scenic byway which i believe helped out a lot the last litter plus uh, litter mm -hmm. sweep yes I'm, I'm pretty sure that was true so um it will start on earth day friday april 22 and we're looking for sponsorships partners and litter leaders which Evan Padua did last year. I don't know who else was involved, but it, everybody did a wonderful job. It was a really amazing effort. I mean, this is 73 miles of river accesses that are subject to be cleaned up. And if you look around, you can see that all the trash is back. You know, we haven't had a lot of snow cover and you can see that. Um, so anybody that wants to help out with that is very welcome. Just go over and sign up with Ashley or none. We don't have a formal lit litter leader for Tustin at this point. So, but you could absolutely contact me or Evan Padua. Um, the next thing is our long-term fiscal sustainability plan. And that was uh, funded by the grant from Pennsylvania that we got two years ago. And um, it's a big deal. It's where do we go from here? And if we don't make certain changes, uh, the future is not good. So we're gonna um, all read the report, attend a round table discussion, probably at the Narrowsburg Union, um, not sure of the date at this point and discuss the long and the short term changes that have to be made. Um, the representatives that we have, both state of New York and, state, and uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania have offered to help out in terms of what changes could we make that facilitate more grants to be received. Grants are the future for that organization, for, for the UDC. Um, the DRBC's proposed rulemaking, we approved a letter on that. We also approved a comment letter on the Milan Bill Skinner's Falls Bridge. And it is such a, it's not in the town of Tustin, but in terms of a cultural, historic, beautiful, uh, incredibly important structure. And of course, Skinner's Falls being a, a incredibly used place for, for recreation, for tourist recreation, um, it's really important to see if we can save that bridge and have it rehabilitated, put, put into use as a one lane bridge and be the, cultural and historic resource that it is continue to exist for that. So um, I believe the byway has commented favorably on that strategy. So has NPS and the UDC just recently put a letter out specifically in response to the study that PennDOT did, which ignored uh, and their, their summary of their study ignored what all the people who called in and attended from the community were saying. So I think they just need to hear it again. Um, and you can certainly refer to the UDC's letter, which is on our website, upperdelawarecouncil.org. All the information you could possibly need to make a comment is there. You could choose any paragraph, put your own information, create your own spin, your own feelings, uh, express them, and that's, um, would be a great thing to do for us. Um, and where are we? Oh, DEC with the annual tree and shrubs seedling sale, which I believe are free if you uh, plant them in New York, but you could go to the DEC's website. And then the park service, the only thing we, there wasn't much happening there. Cody Hendricks' dad passed away. So he is the land use specialist for, for them. And uh, so everybody was kind of, uh, you know, sending him their good, wishes and Laura, the only other thing I can think of to say is that Lauren Hopman, who's working remotely as their uh, NPS's historical and cultural person um, has moved out West. It's likely they'll need a replacement, but I don't believe they posted that position at, at this time. She's still doing it from, from wherever she lives. So if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Would have any questions? Thank you, Sue. You're very welcome. Uh, Brandy, Energy Committee, anything? Um, oh, I unmute me. Am I unmuted? I am. Good. Um, uh, 
I don't have a report because we didn't have a meeting this month because of the holidays, but um, I just wanted to, I just found out that um, Kevin and Greg are now on the committee and I wanted to welcome you guys and, and look forward to working with you. Um, that's about it. I, we went over 19,000 pounds of soft plastic. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Joe. you, Brandy. Uh, zoning update, any? Uh, well, the zoning update committee continues to meet twice a month, and we're working on that. And uh, Seguina grants. Okay, grants. Uh, the first thing is the Little Lake Erie Culvert project is uh, proceeding, believe it or not, the right of way process, which has been a very long process, is near the end. And once that's completed, that we get the, everybody to agree and then contract sign, there are a few other steps and then we can go out to bid. Um, the UDC uh, grant for the zoning update is on target because the committee is continuing to meet two times per month. That's the second and uh, the first and the third uh, Tuesday at two o'clock. The water system upgrade. Um, we continue to seek external grant funding for the water district. Greg and I had a Zoom meeting with Congressman Delgado's office for two reasons, to make sure that the Congressman was aware of our need for funding for that project and to learn of available grants. For the most part, we were told that money will be available, but it hasn't been filtered down to, um, to their office as to how much money. I spoke, I was, this was my favorite part, number four. I spoke with the USDA representative for our area with reference to REAP zones. And um, she said that there, undoubtedly will be funding for water systems through the REAP zone. Again, they haven't gotten the final number from the federal government as to how much is allocated to the REAP zones, but um, we're encouraged at the prospect of those available funds. Um, Jane, a REAP is what? What's that acronym? What, what? what does REAP mean? What are those? It's, uh, there are only uh, Congressman Hinchy back 25 years ago, maybe, he um, was able to get Sullivan County and the Worsing in one of, I think there's only five zones in the country. And it's a, a zone that is um, identified by the USDA as being rural and poor and in need. And so there's extra money that goes just to people in the zones. So um, we're hoping to get that. And the uh, acronym REAP stands for Rural Energy for America Program. There right. you go. Rural. I knew there was a rural. Yeah, I always think it's economic, but it's energy. <laughs> um, number five, I'm going to ask the town board if we can apply for two Sullivan Renaissance grants, one for a technical assistance grant for a landscape architect to design plantings for Clark Park Road to make it nicer and more inviting. And also then a municipal partnership grant to purchase the plant material according to the plan. And um, I've spoken to representatives from the Narrowsburg Beautification Group and um, they've told me what their desires are for Renaissance. Uh, grants this year so we can lump it together and work together and that'll make a stronger grant application. Also, by the way, I spoke with Brandy because um, the Energy Committee gets new benches from the uh, TREX organization every six months, I think it is, provided that we uh, submit 500 pounds, which seems to be pretty easy the way Brandy collects this and we save it. So um, Brandy said she'd put it in the back of her hat, uh, in the back of her head, and maybe we can get benches along Kirk Road for when people walk up and get exhausted like people like me. Um, and oh, this, yeah. 
After a long and demanding search for appropriate documentation, we were awarded the funds to, to have a historic marker uh, made to recognize the old lava schoolhouse on the corner of Parker Road and 52. And this funding comes from the William Pomeroy Foundation. And that wasn't easy to do. They are sticklers. So I'm very happy about that. Yeah, that was, a, that was a lot of work. Yeah, it was. And wait till you see the marker. You didn't know, I bet you, that the lava schoolhouse served as the meeting house for the lava fire department in 1938 to 52. And it was also an observation post for World War II. They watched out for the planes coming over. You'll see it on the marker. I never heard that before. Oh, yeah. That's history for you. Close up to 97 or closer to 25? No, it's 52. 25. Okay. 52 yeah, to and Parker, which is just this side of uh, your road. Uh, yeah, but Parker goes in a Yeah, it's, it hits yeah. its light. Yeah. It's the one closest to your road. Right across the cemetery. Yeah. Right across the cemetery. So is that the White House that was just renovated? Yeah. Oh, no, wow. that's it. Any questions for Jane and Grant? If not, I am going to open up the floor to public comment before we walk into old business. From the floor, do you have any comment from the gallery? Thank you. Yes. I'm just going to stand here. Um, you can actually stand over at the end of the table there. That would be great. I'm Frankie Ochoa. I'm the first partner. Um, and I want to start my comments with an apology to Supervisor Johnson. Um, I understand that the town is in a tough position, and I believe there are some hard feelings. Um, Can you speak up, Frankie, please? Sure. So, and I mean that sincerely. <clears throat> I'm sorry. But that is the case. Uh, it appears to me that Johnson, as well as influential uh, constituents, believe that Nico's letter cost them uh, the election. During public comment, after Nico's letter went out, Ned Lang said, I just want to put the town on notice that this man, being Nico, has put this town in a very rough position and should be removed from the zoning board as a chairman. Okay, so I understand why Supervisor Johnson engineered and delivered a symbolic act of retribution for appointing by appointing a new chairperson. Despite the fact that this is a very awkward situation for the zoning board members, who are your town volunteers, not to mention the new zoning board chair, who certainly deserves a much better and friendlier welcome than this, not to mention the applicant who is mid-process. Um, but okay, sure, you get it? So I just wanna point out that I think overall there is a misunderstanding Nico's letter didn't cause the supervisor's running mates to lose the election. Nico's letter simply exposed what has been going on for the past few years to voters, things the town was very aware of and did nothing about. So rather than shoot the messenger, perhaps a look at what these things are, right, and some resolution to act on them might be a better way forward. I believe that the removal of Nico from the position of chair sets a dangerous precedent. If other residents shine a light on the murky manipulations of their town, will they also be shot down? After the letter was sent out, the town did more in three days than they had accomplished in three years in regards to the occupation of town property on Cackletown Road, but there remains quite a bit to do. The wetland was destroyed for a reason wasn't accidental. And if we leave it to the current owners, or partial owners, I should say, uh, I don't think anything is going to change. So I ask the new board to consider whether or not they will take action to restore this wetland and end the continued occupation of the town's culprit. If the town board decides not to, to take the action not to do anything, right? There's still other issues that need to be considered. Little Lake Erie is one, right? The last heavy rainfall, we saw unprecedented flooding and damage to property, 
the one road which goes in and out of Irish Hill was impassable. That's a result of the beaver dam no longer existing. Okay, there's also the issue of fire safety on Cackletown Road. We know that our hydrant has low water pressure. It used to be that the pond was a reservoir for firefighters, but that pond doesn't exist anymore. So if the town is not going to take action to restore the wetland, then we need some fire safety thing to happen, right? We need a survey, we need a study, we need to know that our property is protected on Cackletown Road. And I believe that this should be an item on the town's capital budget if the wetland is not restored. I just wanna say that this whole Capital Town Road process has been unfolding like the most disgusting onion I have ever seen. Um, and it's horrific. And I'm really, um, I just, it's like the, the worst soap opera. I don't know what will happen next. Um, but I just wanna say that uh, the situation is not gonna go away. Unfortunately, Nico and I are not going to go hide and disappear and never bother you again. We certainly will be here much to your I'm sure, joy, right? Um, but this is going to take time. It's going to take concern. It's going to take bravery. And I just want to put it back uh, at the feet, uh, at the table of the new board to say, I hope that something happens with this. And I hope that you um, do make an action, right? I hope that this situation can be resolved. And I truly hope, uh, Success to the new town board in all your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comment from the floor? Do we have any comment in the gallery? Mr. Ullman would like to make a statement. Um, Public comment if he wishes to. Just brief. Mr. Ullman, if you could make a comment, please direct it to the town board. Yes. Uh, hello, all. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Um, I've heard a lot of falsehoods being told, and I haven't commented. Um, but I, I, I feel compelled to comment at this point. Um, all the culverts are on my property, by uh, hundreds of feet. This has been substantiated by um, two surveys, um, both filed with the county for decades. Um, the wetlands, uh, they were not destroyed for a reason or uh, by any doings of anyone. Uh, nature did it. DEC investigated it, found that nature did it and heavy, heavy rains and flooding. Actually a town resident, uh, someone very well regarded was there and watched it and saw uh, and took a video of it. I, I won't mention her name. She can stand forward if she wants to. Um, so people think it seems that if they keep telling a story, eventually it becomes truth. It doesn't. Um, the, 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 all these accusations have been investigated by troopers, by the DEC, by the town themselves, by the highway department. They've all come up false and lacking. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the floor for a moment. Uh, I wish the new members of the board uh, a great time as board members and uh, happy new year to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the gallery? I see nobody raising their hand. Okay. If not, I am. Okay. I am going to move into old business 3.1. <clears throat> the compensation schedule, uh, the following items to add the 2020 schedule of fees. The attorney to the town as per contract in the attorney to the town justice court as per contract. I would make a motion to add those two. No second. All in favor? All right. Opposed? Uh, 
3.2 board appointments, uh, the cleaner, James Agar and maintenance, uh, Tim Belushi, uh, were the only two that were not put on. The others that you see on your schedule actually were. An outstanding thing about the engineer, you were gonna check with him. Yes, and I did not. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I, I will though for the next. So I'd make a motion to add those two. Uh, All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, number four, new business, 4.1 Sullivan Renaissance Grant. Okay, so I, um, I, I touched on it in the grants report. I'd like the board approval to allow me to apply for two Renaissance grants, one for a technical assistance grant, which is $2,500 to hire a landscape architect to create a design for plantings along the road. And then the second one would be a community impact grant for $20,000, which I will tell you, I think we have to have a 25% match, which we have budgeted in Parks and Rec, um, so that we could work with actually the unification group and uh, work to get the a landscape architect design implemented. So the first one's a pure grant, there's no matching. I can't hear you. The, the first one, there's no matching. The second one, there is matching. The first one's a pure grant. Yes, correct. No match. Correct. Any other questions from the board? Is there a uh, criteria for how the landscape architect is chosen? Chosen? Mm -hmm. No. I don't we have think a, so. we have several in town, so it oh, might be I didn't know that. To, uh, that is reach great. out to locals. Okay. A motion to. I'll make that motion. Allow the application for the technical assistance grant and for a municipal partnership grant to purchase plants according to a plan. So, so moved. I have a motion. A second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. 4.2 are Sullivan County hazardous, hazardous mitigation. Uh, this is to fulfill for the county so that we can continue on with the hazardous mitigation plan. Whereas the town of Tustin, with the assistance from Albany Visualization and Informatics Labs, has gathered information and prepared the Sullivan County hazard mitigation plan. And whereas the Sullivan County hazard mitigation plan has been prepared in accordance with the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000. And whereas the town of Tust is a local unit of government that has afforded the citizen an opportunity to comment and provide input in the plan and affirms that the plan and whereas the town of Tustin has reviewed the plan and affirms that the plan will be updated no less than every five years, be it resolved by town council, the town of Tustin adopts the Sullivan County hazard mitigation plan as the jurisdiction's natural hazard mitigation plan and resolves to execute the actions in the plan. Who? This was what was started back at last year. I, I remember, but um, the town of Tustin has reviewed and affirms the plan will be updated. And who's going to do that? The county. The county? Yeah, we're part of where it's a little subdivision of the county. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yes. All right, I'll move that. A second. I will second any questions, comments from the board. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 4.3, our Upper Delaware Scenic Byway contribution, a motion to make monetary contribution to the Upper Delaware Scenic Byway in an amount not to exceed $1,000 that has been budgeted already. It's also the traditional amount that we've given for years. I'll move that. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Jane, will you do number four? I'm just going to recuse for the whole part of that. Okay. Um, uh, I'd like a motion to reappoint Kathleen Johnson to the Board of Assessment Review for a five-year term from September 30th, 2021 to September 30th, 2026. Does everybody know what the Board of Assessment Review is? Yeah. Give me a hint. You want to tell us, Ken? Every year, every, every year, Property owners have an opportunity to challenge. So this is the grievance. Assessment. Grievance. grievance board. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know what it is. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The grievance board. Everybody knows that word. 
Okay. Uh, may I have a motion for that? Just a second. I'll second. Kevin seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Um, recused. Aye. And opposed. Thank you, Jane. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Can you unmute Dave for me? Find him first. Dave, huh? Yep. Hey, Dave. Hello. Uh, 4.5, Dave, is the septic tank pumping and removal of used filter sand bid. Only one was received uh, from Cobra Line. Base yeah. bid price per gallon yeah. to include three emergency calls at 22 cents per gallon. The surcharge price per call for emergency call outs over three, 22 cents per gallon. Uh, labor hauling and disposal of the used filter sand, $36 per yard. And that had the non collusion with it. Dave, can you tell us? Yeah. I think you've used Coberline in the past and been satisfied. Is that correct? Yes, we have. That is a bit. That is an increase from the previous years. We were paying seventeen cents a gallon. Now it's twenty-two cents a gallon for pumping. Just so everybody's aware of that. This was the second bid that went out. The second bid that went out. The first one we received nothing. Right. Have, have you checked around the other places? Oh, well, we've sent. No, no, no. We, I meant other, other towns. Are they paying about the same rate? Yes. Throughout the state, it's it's similar anywhere between 20 cents north New York all the way down towards Rockland County. It's paying almost 30 cents. Okay. Dave, do you think that the increase of five cents per gallon reflects the lack of competition or a, a rise in their prices and expenses? I was just informed last week that Cobaline's possibly being sold and another company's taken over. And I believe that's the reason why we've gotten the increase. Thank you. Your recommendation to the board, Dave? I accept the bid as proposed. Any other questions of Dave? No. If not, I would make a motion to accept the 2022 septic tank pumping removal disposal of used filter sand bid. Did you make the motion? I made the motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. 4.693 Main Street, that's the bank. Um, a discussion about starting some demolition on the interior. Uh, we have a plan. Well, we have a plan that it needs to be emptied in order to do something. Um, well, do you mean per, per, per procurement on demolition? I mean, that's still got to go out to, to bid. If well, it's, it doesn't, I, depending on dollar value you're talking about, would dictate whether that's to go out to you know, seal bid, but you got to comply with procurement policy at the very least. Which would mean you'd have to get a certain number of quotes. So we've, got to, we've got to come up with a, a plan of what we want done on the inside so that we can actually put this out and get it moving. Right. That's what I'm driving at. What do we want? I don't want to um, move to demo it, to demo out, demolish it if we don't have a plan. There's certain pieces in there that you know that, regardless of. Well, what that's what I'm saying. Oh, wow. uh, so I think the building committee needs to go down and yes, yes. formulate a plan, plan to bring back to the board yes. so that we can okay, when, have when an idea do. at the next work session, to update the board on what we want to do and get it started. Yes, I agree. Okay, so table that motion and until then, the building committee uh, advises. Yeah, and what we're going to do with some of the stuff that's inside. Um, we need to come up with an idea. There's desks and file cabinets and we hold an auction. Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah, you I mean there are services you can use for auction stuff. 
the town trucks have been on auctions internationally. Yeah, that's com yeah. that's commonly how it's done here. Um, with, 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 you know, youth equipment and vehicles. Um, you could. So we need to identify the things we're not going to identify. Use. You can publish it. And just ask for for people to submit the highest and best bid for it. I'll table that. Yeah, we'll that'll that'll be part of what we bring back to the board yep. for the work session in February. Okay. <clears throat> um, Four point seven. Uh, COVID quarantine guidelines. Uh, the town of Tustin follows the guidelines for COVID-19 quarantine for all its employees as per the policy of the Sullivan County Public Health. And whereas Sullivan County updates their policy, the town shall follow suit. And whereas at-home test kits will not be accepted or any test submitted as proof of negative must come from a qualified provider. Um, this is for the employees in the town of Tustin. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Just at this point when they are going to be out on exposure or they're going to be out for a positive test, positive test needs to be one that uh, needs to come from a, a healthcare. Who's responsible setting. for the payment? Well, that's a good question because if it's an exposure during uh, work, it's going to be work related. <laughs> so the town would be responsible for it. If it's an exposure that's outside of work and they're not going to come to work because of the positive test, that would be there. Okay, because we did prove a couple of them. Mm -hmm. Depending on where you go, testing, even if from qualified providers, some testing is free and some testing is covered by insurance also. Mm -hmm. So you may not be out of pocket anything, anyway, nor would the employee know. That's interesting. Okay. Um, I'll move that. I will second that. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, 4.8, Tusted Youth Commission appointment. A motion to appoint Ashley Ben Ben Scoten mm -hmm. to the Tustin Youth Commission. Thank you. She is, um, it is to note, she is not a town of Tustin resident, although in our um, bylaws, it says that she did not have to be because we cannot seem to get enough um, parents within the town of Tustin. So she is a member of the town of Pashecton. Um, her children will not um, get any, um, can't pay for her children to go on events and the children of Tustin, but her children, just like other children in the general community, can participate in other events. Um, and she is understanding of that, um, but would like to help and be a part of our youth commission. Okay, I'll move that we point Ashley. I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? That's me. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Ken, we don't need a resolution for, for our assessor to do in persons. Um, we wouldn't even really need one if he wanted to do it remotely or leave it the way it was. Autonomous. Okay. Very good. Um, Want to do public comment before? Session? Yeah, you're going to. Yes. Let me do that first. Um, there will be a executive session this evening. So I'm going to open the floor back up to public comment for doing that. Nobody. Uh, uh, I think Brandy. Brandy. Yeah. Hi, um, since you're um, going to start um, looking at the bank building, I was just wondering if you guys, who's on the building committee? Who's on the building committee? Ben and myself. Great. If, if you guys could consider doing the air source heat pump, the mini split, it would really save energy. And uh, we have it in that building in the room you're sitting. It's been really efficient. Just for consideration, I could get you grant money most likely for that. That's it. Who does it, Brandy? Well, an electric, yeah. you know, electrician can come put that in. They put it in your, the building you're sitting in. It's just for your consideration. I just, it would be a really good way to save energy and a good opportunity since you're renovating. Thank you, Brandy. Sure. Anybody else on there? Okay. 
If not, I would make a motion to enter into executive session for the purpose of matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <laughs> we stay here or? Yeah, stay right there. Yeah, back. Randy's a former owner of a bank. <laughs> she owned the bank and hanged it. So she had to deal with a vault door. You guys Yeah, no, that makes sense. But it's kind of interesting. There's so many. There's vault. Yeah, you can't say for executive <laughs> And that's essentially it. I mean, yeah, if we come out of executive session and make a motion, yeah, <laughs> not about it. Uh, and that's well. Oh, um, Okay. I think this is where you guys find in your flooding. I don't know. Standard set. So without. Okay. You say cheese beneath our mask? Yeah. I'd take the damn thing off. Wear a mask. Do you want masks on or masks off? You can take the mask off. Not from an institutional one. I can lend you. I can hold if you're regulating, you got it. Yeah. Not yet. That was awesome. Thank you. Guys so <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. She, she was out. She was out. It's it's she got Folks, if we can clear the room so they can have an executive yeah. session, that would be wonderful. But I think she's back. We'll check it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She, she, she she yes. Yeah. And the, the meeting is essentially over. Yeah. Come out of the executive session and make some sort of motion, which would then appear. Um, in the minutes, and it'll be back on. I'm just going to be outside, just, just blink the lights, or it's going to be yeah. it's going to be better. I'll come back in, in the place. It's going to be very important. Sideshow. <laughs> I'll get everybody closed, but they're offline, right? No, you hold on. I'm waiting for everyone to. So they haven't hung up yet, those names? No. no. The lurkers. Hmm? Okay. I, I put them in the waiting room. I don't just take them out. Um, they can choose to go to the waiting room themselves. Hmm. Ken, no. sit where I can hear you. <laughs> Don't you have your hearing aids in, Jay? I'll sit out here, <laughs> take my mask off, and enunciate. How's that? Okay. <laughs> to adjourn. Is that Mr. Ullman, Iris, Kathleen Andrews, Kelly Agar, Ben Johnson? No, she's cool. Get everybody in the way. Yeah, they're all ending. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're recording in your own. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Greg's going to just let anybody know that outside that we're. Back in session. So yep. My toes are numb. I don't know if I the chickens to yeah. eggs. I was hoping you turned the heat up. Oh. How many chickens you got? Did you notice that I put holes in here? Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, and so now, have, and I got reprimanded by the councilman Yattle. He said, where's your book? On stage. So I actually, uh, Bruce, now is a light on him. you know, the office it. vote was that Bruce was not going to bring his binder. And he's the only one. And I am impressed. No, Greg did also. Oh, I right. to bring my homework book. See, and I guess you guys have got a little pout to light on. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to draw pictures on. You didn't punch holes in my I tell Bruce, I told Crystal I was reprimanded by Councilman Gettle. <laughs> I said, Jane, where's your homework book? I haven't brought some. Look at you. Just went to find, uh, there's still quite a few people on. Recording and we're unmuted then. And so Greg went to uh, get anybody that's outside. Yeah, they keep playing. We've got still get about 
a dozen to a dozen and a half a day. Like I had a kerosene heater in there last night, but I was trying to run an off-road diesel in because I couldn't think kerosene. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> they huddle. What are you? You're an R2? And I, I, he's on a residential commercial. You can have chickens. I know oh, a great frustration is in general residential. You know, yeah, well, you know what? Okay, that's, 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 that's the most restricted district in the town. Huh? The, 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 the DR is the most restricted district. Yeah, I know, no chickens. I had duck, I had a Muscovy duck one. <laughs> <laughs> he lived on the pond. He wasn't really technical. Oh, of course. <laughs> you back in? Okay, you're you're alive. Do what you gotta do. You have a new guest. Homework book out again. Hi. <laughs> um, do you want to ask you can... any? And them if they want any comment. No. no? Never mind. Hey, Laura. How you? Okay. Uh, anything from the executive session? Are we going into closing items? Uh, nothing uh, to bring to the board at this time. Okay. Closing items, board comment? Um, I just had one thing that I researched that it might be good to have in the record. If with the increase in the water utilities, there is a program from the state called the LIHWAP, which does offer, if people fall behind on their bills, it does offer with some income restriction the opportunity to get money from the state to pay your water bill. Just water or water and water sewer? Water and sewer. Now, uh, there are different limits. I think uh, water is uh, one third and sewer is two thirds of the potential money that can be given. If you can give me that link, I can put it on the water, on the water awesome. under our water. You know, website. I was disappointed to learn. I'm disappointed in us because we said that we were going to have a letter that went out with that water bill and we didn't. They, yes. they went out on the, what, two different times. We put out the, in June and September, they had the new rates schedules were sent out. No, I, I agree, Jane. I mean, I wasn't on the board room, but just a, a, something real simple. Basically saying your, your bill's going to go up. Well, it was on we the did. back of the bill. We did. It was, but it I was, know, but you know what it was? A, it's a bad valorum. Alarm huh? tax explanation makes all the difference right. in the world. Right. And I, just, I talked to so many people, friends, neighbors, this and that. I said, you know, your bill's going up. And they're like, what? But actually, some yeah. didn't, some didn't. What what they have to do is to actually look at their property tax bill. And you'll notice that there's not a water levy on your new tax bill. That went away. Right. Well, I'm, so they, but when you explain it to them, um, some people actually stayed the same with it a few dollars per quarter. Some people actually went up per quarter and some people actually went down per quarter. But they have to take that ad valorem tax and figure that in with what you paid. Take all four quarters. Um, I believe it, the number it came up to. Add to that the ad valorem tax, divide by four. That's what their actual quarterly payments were. Um, but yes, I, I, I just think, I, you know, a yeah, little better just more, advertising. Yeah. Well, it's been talked about. It's been talked about. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a problem with all organizations. The people you're reaching are the people you're reaching. People you're not reaching, the ones who don't understand this, this stuff, who don't follow every board meeting. I'm just but thinking. they have, uh, they, the, the water department received quite a few um Calls about it, and I think the the clerks have done a good job in explaining it to them, or at least people feel that they've done a good yeah. job explaining it. Oh, okay. Any meeting reminders? No, I, have comments. Okay. I don't usually have comments, but I have some. Uh -oh. So they were replying to fire protection on Cackletown Road. I've been in the fire department for thirty-seven years. We did have a structure fire on Cackletown Road. That beaver pond was not adequate water source because of the mud bottom. We ended up damming the stream below the culverts, which you can do with any little trickle of water. We had adequate water source plus tanker relays down there. So that beaver pond was never an adequate fire protection water source, just so all you guys know. Sickler's house. 
Yep. That was an enormous fire, right? Yep. Yeah, I remember that. And we did. We ladder made a ladder dam in the stream itself because you could not get any swears near that thing, that beaver pond. And when we did get a portable pump out into it, it plugged right up. So that that's kind of fooey on that comment end. So uh, and that stream is still adequate to retain water out of. Because it only takes a tarp and a ladder, and you've got one heck of a pond in there to draw out of. And then you don't have to deal with ice during the winter. That. And yes, the water pressure and hydrants down there stink. Always has. Yeah. You cannot hook into a hydrant in town and really draft water because it'll collapse the pipes. In anywhere. Yeah. No, we know. We know. Oh, and that, that's that's always been so to to blame that on the hydrant and the beaver pond is a, a bunch of malarkey. Nice turn. I think the gloves have. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have one for gloves. Meeting reminders our next work session will be the first Tuesday. <laughs> Which mm -hmm. is February 1 and then February 8, correct? And I forget, uh, um, are they open to the public? Yes. Okay. First mm -hmm. Tuesday? Yes. At what time? 6 30. I'm sure it's in the book. Yeah. Gave us. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I almost printed you out our Google Calendar. <laughs> all the meetings on there. You can also go to our Google Calendar on our website. Okay. And you can add it to your um, personal calendar. All right. Oh, good. Google Calendar. Yeah. Crystal, why don't you make the announcement? What you told me is that there's a foul up in the in the computer system. Click on it. Add it. Um, oh, um, so our meetings in Unicode, I have to make time. It's, it's tax season. I have a stack of this bunch. I'm going to go upstairs and do some taxes. But I have to get a phone. I'll pull out to Unicode. That is who hosts our meeting uh, website right now. And um, Jane said, you know, your minutes aren't posted online. It's not working. And I said, yeah, I posted them. They're there. They should be there. And I'm going back and looking. And some spots where it shows that the meeting minutes are there, you click on it, and it's an agenda or it's in a blank page. Yeah. And I was unaware of that. Um, until I think it was yesterday, the day before I went and I'm clicking through and a couple had it, a couple didn't. So I apologize. I do have all the minutes printed. Um, if anyone in the public, anyone, I've em been emailing them here and there. Um, so I will get on that as quick as possible. I've got the deputy working like crazy with taxes and everything else. So in between that, we'll get out to Unicode and get that fixed. So yeah, I apologize. Good. I'll I'll send you some recordings. The Zoom recordings, I'm trying to get those uploaded as, pos as quick as possible. We do have, I want, there was a couple, we, I, except I just shut it off. Um, we have been doing audio recordings since the pa this past fall for planning ZBA and for town board. So I, this way we have a backup. So we don't have issues before because every once in a while, our Zoom meetings, the conversion, it stops and it doesn't convert and it doesn't download. Um, so all those things we are trying to at least get backups and. I, but I like to see it on paper because I don't want to listen to the whole thing all over. But, well, and I and I the audio and video up, then I can get paper out. Yeah. So. And I was on Crystal's case, and she said, "But it is on, but it was a snafu." Yeah. So no, it's not her fault. That. This is a super low priority, um, and I'll send you a note on it. But the Association of Towns, which we were on for this mm -hmm. training, has a link to every town. Mm -hmm. The link to Tustin has nice little things. But the town board is from 2004. It's still Charlie Knapp. <laughs> it's still Lou Mackel. They have the wrong website. Oh, maybe that's it. Whatever. I'll send you a note. It's, it, this is not a crucial thing. I mean, that's kind of a big deal. We had an old we had an old website. Right, but it's the, it's you know, and uh, somewhere on the on our website, Kelly's extension is 1007, which will get you to the court. No. Whatever, it's either 1007, 1003. In the book, it's one. On the website, it's another. I'm just, I'll it's send you a note. The Associated Towns book? Huh? No, no, no. About, it's, it's I'm talking. Oh, okay. Well, Homework we'll book has a right extension. Okay. The, the website has a wrong extension. Got it. Oh, I'll, send right. you, I'll, I'll send you an email. <laughs> Where's my homework book? <laughs> well, I have a cart. I'm your friend. You got a cart. cart. Motion to adjourn? Oh, uh, yeah, I move that we adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. okay.
Thank you for calling me back in. Brenda, did you come from below 